Welcome to the Daily Show, everyone. Thanks, Trevor. It's my first time being here. It is your first time being here. I feel like it's been... It's been way too long, because, like, I watch everything you do, and oh. I'm, like, a giant fan, and then I see you everywhere else, and Oh, then... my God, you're, like, stalking me. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real, congratulations <laughs> on everything you've done. I Thank mean, you. like, we watched you blow up in stand-up, which everyone loves, and then... The, the, the thing that really brought me joy was just seeing how you kick ass in movies as well. Oh, thanks so you, much. You're a movie star now. You realize that, right? Woo! It was, it, it, it was really fun, and I got to mack on those three fine-ass dudes. That's you watched true. the movie, right? That's true. I know. Yes. It was like, who wrote this thing? Like, right? whose idea was this? Yeah. Who was in charge? Um, you have Keanu Reeves fighting over you. <laughs> I, I mean... Know. And then he came to your show, didn't he? He came to my show, uh, which was amazing. He was so sweet, and he was, like, in such a good mood. Right. Afterwards, too, who's really smiley. Um, yeah, it was the Do best. Do people get confused, though, if, if, like, Keanu Reeves plays your boyfriend in a movie and then they see him at your show? Isn't someone like, uh, I think it's real? No, no one... No one th I mean, like, I'm cute or whatever, but no one thinks that he really <laughs> wants to date me. They were like, that movie was straight-up fiction. Like, all my friends were like, Ali, uh, you're, you're cute, but you ain't that cute. <laughs> <laughs> um... You have fans of your stand-up. You have fans of your movies. But a book is a very different medium for us to engage Ali Wong in. Your first book... It is. And it's also an interesting style of book. You've written this book, Dear Girls. It's specifically written to your children. Letters to my, my two daughters. Right. I have two girls who um, are under the age of four. And the first one was in that striped dress mm -hmm. when I filmed uh, Baby Cobra, and the second one's in the leopard dress. And um, <laughs> they're very aware of it, too. Like, they know which, which ones they were. And uh, I wanted to... My dad wrote me this letter before he passed away. And my, my real name is Alexandra, and it was started with Dear Alexandra. And he like, reflected a lot on our relationship and how I had affected his life. And um, it was a short letter, and I, would, and I love it so much. Wow. But I wish that he had written me more, because after he passed, it was too late to ask him all these questions about who he... When he... When I was born, like, he was already the su successful anesthesiologist. Right. And in the same way, like, when my girls were born, they only know me... Um, after I filmed those two specials, and they don't know like what it took for me to get where I am the and how I before the grind before, and I think that's yeah. so that's such an important life lesson. They and I want them to know that I wasn't, you know, that I struggled a lot, and then I had to work really hard. So it it really is an interesting book because you know when 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 I first got the book, they were like, oh no, Ali wrote this for her two daughters, and then I was like, oh, this is gonna be like a cute little like kill kids book. Oh no, and then she writes about like erectile dysfunction. Yeah. And, like that, that she experienced while living in New York. Yeah, and yeah. Stuff. And then I was like, this is, uh, this is like, it's very, uh, it's, it's graphic and it's real. It's like, yeah. it's very real. <laughs> like, I'm assuming it's not for them now. No! They're like reading like, they're watching Daniel Tiger. I hope they watch like, it's so, there's so much like, dirty content in there that's yes. like even more dirty than my specials that I hope that they watch the specials long before they read the book. <laughs> right. But, but it, I mean, as much as it is for your daughters, it, it really is for women in general. That's what I, that's what I love about the book, because you're telling your story. And, for instance, you share stories about stand-up comedy that I would have never thought of and have never experienced because I'm a man in stand-up. So, for instance, you just talk about how much you have to love stand-up as a woman, when like you talk about like going to like walking to your car yeah, at like one a.m. by think, yourself. I think and... the reason I think a big reason why there aren't more women who do stand up, it's not be getting on stage is the easy part. That's the fun part, and being funny is the fun part. But going on the you have to go on the road right. to be a great stand up because you have to test out your material in all these different cities mm -hmm. in front of all these different audiences, and that's. It's a safety issue. I think that's why more women don't do it, because when you go on the road, the first day you go out, as you know, you get into a car with four strangers. Always, yes. From your... From your and it's crazy. You yeah. just, like, get into a car and you're like, I never met this person before. Yes. They could kidnap it's you. Like, it's like a and random thing. And you're very thing. kidnappable. Yes. But you could defend yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but this is... I mean, like, because, like, when we started, it was before Uber, before any of that. So, like, what would be funny is you'd get to, like, a random town. This would happen... Like, every comedian has a story. You get to a random town, you're performing in a random comedy club, right. and then they just tell you, like, Jim is gonna pick you up. <laughs> right. And you're like, who's Jim? They're like, he works with the club. You're like, at the club or with the club? Yeah. There's and no picture being sent no, to your no. phone. No, no. You don't know who Jim is. Some guy's coming yeah. in some, like, 1975 Toyota yeah. Corolla that yeah. smells like the ghost 
of like a dead <laughs> comic sperm. And you're just like, are you like, is this for yes. real new? Every time you get in the car, there's always, a, there's always like, it's, you get in the car and the person's always, oh, you can just throw that on the back seat. There's always something on the oh back that you have to throw. There's like old Fritos yes. and yes. stuff. Yes, yeah, yeah. So it, I can imagine how unnerving that must be. For, for a man me. that's like, oh, this is gross, yes. but so is my apartment, whoever, right. whatever. <laughs> but for a woman, it's like, am I gonna get killed? <laughs> you like, every time, you right. know, you think about that. And it's, uh, it, it was, like, I think about the days when I started, and I would never want my daughters to go through that. You also talk you know? about, like, like just the journey of, of, of your rise in comedy. You know, you talk about your success, the grind that came behind it, but then you talk about, like, just the experiences that you've had where, where someone, you know, many people, in fact, tried to reduce you to just you know, your, your, your factor. So they went like, oh, right. you, it, you're getting, you're successful just because oh my you're God. Asian. There's like, just because even you're now, a woman. Just because like, you're pregnant. There's so many, there was a guy who, I, I won't name names, he's not a very successful comedian, so I don't even know if you would know who he was. No, I don't. But he came up to, he came, <laughs> you wouldn't know. You're, you're out of there now. Uh, but he like came up to me while I was pregnant the second time, and he touched my belly with his like fat, sweaty hand, which is so gross to begin with. It's like, it, it's like, why don't you finger me while you're at it? This is so not okay. Like, just because I'm pregnant right. doesn't mean it's okay for you to touch my belly. And he was like, oh, so this is your shtick. This is like your thing now, right? And I'm like, I was like, getting pregnant is not rainbow suspenders. <laughs> it's not a shtick. And then he was like, you're so lucky, Allie, because you get all of this attention because you're both a female and a minority. And I was like, yeah, because, you know, historically, that's always been the winning combo. <laughs> for recognition and success. Oh, and he man. was like, and he was like, you know what I mean. Like me, I'm just another white guy. And I was like, be a better white guy. There's so many successful, there's like, there's Jimmy Kimmel, there's Will Ferrell, there's Nick Kroll, there's John Mulaney. I can name like, I could go on this whole show for like, 35 days. We'll do like another Naming, show like, just of yeah. successful <laughs> white comedians. Just be a funnier white guy. Right. Like, like that's it. So um, the girls are gonna read the book. Girls out there will read the book. Women can read the book. Men can read the book too, Trevor. I like yeah. that. I did, I did. Yeah. I did, <laughs> I did. So it's Dear my, Girls. My husband wrote the afterword too. Yes. It's very sweet. Yes, you're, he did. He wrote a beautiful yeah. thing about how like you consult with him about the jokes that you will tell about him on stage, which is really nice. Yeah. I like that. That and was really sweet. It was very sweet. And what it's like to be married to me, you know? Cause people, that's the number one question people ask him all the time. Cause they think I'm like standing up on a couch with like a growing life form inside of me, just like screaming these like very funny anecdotes at him all the time. And he's like, that's not. You know. <laughs> That's <laughs> not our life. Um, Ali Wong, congratulations on Thank another you. successful endeavor. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you for being on the Daily Kitchen. You can catch Ali on the Milk and Money Tour. Dear Girls is available now for everybody. Ali Wong, everybody.